Hey y'all, uh, what's up? Uh, welcome to a new series that I am doing called FED Elements, and the point of this series is to just create specific elements uh, that should make it easier for viewers to find what they're looking for. Uh, for example, in this episode, we're going to do uh, the hammerhead turn by request from Lamtron. That's going to be our first element. Later on, we'll do loops, Immelmans, dive loops, cobra rolls, everything. And that should just make it easier for people to find uh, specific elements that they want to see. I've done a few elements in other videos, but there's some times buried in there, and, and maybe it'll be easier for people to who don't want to watch me build an entire coaster in FVD. Uh, this should make it easier for them to find the specific element that they're looking for. So, the B&M hammerhead turn is a very distinct element. Um, you can see here from the pictures that I've taken of Nitro from a behind-the-scenes tour that I took. It's got a very specific shape. Uh, and so uh, Lamtron asked if I could try to recreate that in FED. I had heard elsewhere that this could be difficult to do in FED, and I didn't really appreciate exactly how difficult it was until I actually gave it a try. So what you see here is the third effort I made uh, of the hammerhead turn. We're definitely getting closer in the direction of where we want to be. You can see the, whoops, the very first one I made looked okay, but it wasn't nearly uh, flat enough on top. The exit of it is really good. The entrance and exit is good, but it's not flat enough on top. And the second one was getting a little bit better, not radically different. And then the third one definitely is getting closer. It's, it's flatter on the top like it should be. The exit now I feel is just a little bit off, but the shape overall is getting closer. So what I'm going to do is, this will be the first video, I'll walk you through just what I did in general to, to achieve this shape. Uh, I'll continue working on it, and in part two, I'll have a finalized version, and I'll walk you through step by step what I did to create that. Um, one thing I want to show you is, I went ahead, and what we're assuming in this series is that you know how to make do basic things in FED. If someone out there really needs a video on the basics, um, I'll be perfectly happy to show you how to do straight, a lift, a drop, that kind of thing. Um, but there are other videos too. So if you really want a, a tutorial on that, let me know in the, the comments and I'll be happy to do that. But uh, mainly in this series, we're just focusing on the elements. So let's go ahead. Oh, and one, uh, two other things. I'm going to upload this track and I'll include a link in the comments to this FED file that'll show you, or not in the comments, but in the description that'll show you. Uh, you can download the file and take a look at it and see what I did. And I'm also, if I can find them, I'm going to put a link to some videos that being, or someone made uh, where they took uh, measurements of the forces that are generated on a B&M ride uh, and put it on YouTube. And it's very helpful for seeing exactly how forces are generated on the ride. So if I can find that, I'll put a link to that as well. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. In this one, I'll just show you the general idea of what I did to get started. Uh, first, we did the, of course, the drop, and we came up into about a 3.5 G uh, pullout, and that's where we get started on the hammerhead turn. So the first thing I did is these turns usually go in the opposite direction first of the direction they're going to turn just so they can come back together and be a little bit closer and take up less space. So uh, I went about 28 degrees to the left just to kind of give us a curve away. And then it straightens out just a bit before it gets into the main turning section up here. So I then straightened it out about 16 degrees before going into the quartic function where it turns 122 degrees in 1.2 seconds. Normally when I do these sorts of uh, these fast turns like this, depending on what you're trying to achieve, of course, but I wanted a kind of straight section here going up because you can see if we go to the side that it's relatively flat. And the way to achieve this is by taking first year, obviously you've got the bottom of the drop right here in green where it's three point, probably about 3.3 .3 here. And uh, so first I take it down just a bit uh, so it flattens out a bit and then take it back up so you start to generate the positive G's as you go into this turn. Uh, a really easy way to do this, this is a very helpful trick and an easy way to do this is to first do this with just a basic 
quartic function. So instead of making this cubic, I do a quartic function. Or, whoops, I hit quintic. I do a quartic function, and obviously it's going to be all messed up. And I just take it down about to where I want it until I get the shape and the time. So you can see if I did about 1.2, it gets so I roughly want that shape. Uh, so what I then do is break that quartic up into two cubics and split them in half. So we're going to say 0.6 because that's what it was. And now you see we're back to the shape that we had. And the reason for doing this is uh, because this gives me more control coming out of this quartic or coming back up to the forces because you can see this side and this side are just a little bit higher. So I generated a little bit more positive G's here in my attempt to try to flatten out the top of this turn. Um, and so that's one way of really doing a, simply first you just do it as a quartic so you can get the basic idea of what you're doing seeing how the roll is going and then you break it up into two cubics and shorten their duration to, to have more control over it and I find that very helpful and then uh, to kind of flatten out the top of this turn uh, because if I just kept it as this, we ended up more with the the sort of roll that we had in the first one where it was just sort of going up like that. And the I wanted it to kind of flatten out at the top, which is more like what the actual hammerhead does. So <clears throat> I banked the force down just a bit. Where are we at? Right here. Nope. Right here. What's going on, man? Well, something weird is happening. Oh, well, let me try again. Hold on. That's weird. All right, FED's acting weird, but whatever. Am I in the right spot here? Uh, something weird is going on. Oh, wait a minute. I know what the problem is. Sorry, we weren't in the right thing. So see, even me, I can mess up, so... All right, so getting back to what I was saying, sorry about that. Uh, I just kind of banked this in the opposite direction a little so it would flatten out a bit. So overall, I'm fairly happy with the shape of this. It can be better. I can work on it some more and fix it up, but it definitely looks better now than it did in the first iteration. The, the exit from the turn is what needs work. If I can exactly mirror this, I think it's going to look a lot better. So I'm going to have to fix this up just a little bit because it goes a little wide there. And it's a little bit too close right here. But uh, basically then coming out of this is just the, the exact opposite of what I did. We turn back the other direction until it's banked outwards a little bit. And then uh, we I just did a return to zero function. And again, I did the two things here where I, I at first... Uh, did the quartic function that would allow me to just get this general shaping and moving the, the forces down a bit. And then you can see that really made a difference here because I switched to a cubic that's one second long and a cubic that's 2.05 seconds long. And that gave me a lot more control over how, and it also goes much higher, obviously. So that gave me a lot more control over how this looks. But uh, unfortunately, it's not 100% perfect. So we'll fix that. And one place where you can really see that is if I come up here based on a similar image view I took of Nitro, uh, it flattens out much more at the top than my current version does. So I'm going to have to fix that. So that's this is going to be part one. And in part two, I'll really get this uh, perfected as much as I'm able to. And I'll walk you through that step by step. And like I said, I will also put the link to the file in the description. So that should be everything for now. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, or if you think I can do it better, you know how to do it better than me, by all means, let me know. I'd be happy to hear it. But otherwise, I will see you next time. Enjoy the ride.